Does anyone know what EIS stands for? This is such a good group. You're right, Environmental Impact Statement. And to talk about Burning Man's Environmental Impact Statement and more, I'm now gonna bring up two of the people who, if Burning Man, the whole freaking 70,000 person thing was one massive theme camp, they would be our theme camp leaders. So let's bring up Associate Director of Government Affairs, Marnie Benson, and Event Operations Director of Black Rock City, Charlie Dolman. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hi, I'm, I'm limping today, sorry. I'm uh, Charlie, the Event Operations Director. And I'm Marnie, Associate Director of Government Affairs. Uh, we're here this weekend to celebrate and inspire. Um, but in this moment, Charlie and I are here to talk about a potentially existential threat to Black Rock City and to Burning Man. Um, the Bureau of Land Management, our permitting agency, the BLM, uh, is currently and independently uh, analyzing environmental impacts for our 2019-2028 permit. Um, they have unilaterally proposed uh, some changes that would permanently alter the way we build Black Rock City, uh, the way we live in Black Rock City, the way we experience Black Rock City, um, if we're able to at all. <laughs> uh, for example, BLM has recommended that they take over gate and airport inspections with a private security company who would inspect every vehicle, every trailer, every person entering the city every time. Uh, they have recommended that we install 10 miles of concrete barriers around our perimeter fence. <laughs> They've recommended that we put trash dumpsters in the city and along Gate Road for 80,000 people's worth of solid waste and debris. Uh, and they have decided to require uh, inspectors for structures over 10 feet tall. So I'll Nevada, pause. So Nevada code <laughs> inspectors. Uh, so Marnie and I had a fun weekend last weekend reading. There's pages and pages and pages of uh, this impact statement. Um, and altogether, these, uh, these recommendations that they put in would, would forever alter our operations and our finances and our culture and honestly potentially look towards the end of Burning Man as we, the Black Rock City event as we currently know it. Um, so we want your help. Um, the way that the NEPA process works, and this is the National Environmental Policy Act, uh, is that there is al it allows for public uh, input. It allows for members of the public to, uh, and subject matter experts, and, and, and all people affected to input into the process. So um, really, we are, this is a call to action. Your voice can help turn this around, um, and a little bit about that. We need each and every person in this room and each and every person who cares about Burning Man, who has been impacted by Burning Man, who loves Burning Man, uh, to express their support for our operations and our culture uh, and to express their concerns for components of the EIS. Um, as Charlie mentioned, identifying subject matter experts in things like air quality or traffic management uh, or night skies or noise, uh, they can weigh in. Um, we have those experts helping us right now, and they are weighing in. Uh, you, uh, when you submit comments, can uh, talk about the mitigations. Um, the, what the list I mentioned earlier are the mitigation, some of the mitigations. There's seven pages worth. That's uh, four of them. Um, and you can uh, submit your comments through the BLM website. Uh, we will have more information on that a little bit later, but I'm going to actually give you the email address if you want it right now. Can I see a show of hands? Should I bother giving you that? Okay. Uh, <laughs> it is BLM underscore NV, so short for Nevada, underscore Burning Man EIS, all one word, at BLM.gov. Should I also give you the cell phone number for the guy who wrote the EIS? <laughs> See, see me after. Uh, so as Charlie mentioned, the, the document is two volumes plus 11 technical reports. It weighs in at 1,032 pages. They dropped it on a Friday. Uh, we read it last weekend. Actually, I'm still not done. Um, 
And there are more problems that um, we're going to discuss a little bit right now. Um, but we invite you to pick the areas that resonate with you. Uh, so if you care about the culture and the impacts of these things to the culture, speak to that. If you are on the operations side and you know, for example, that we are a Leave No Trace event and have a restoration team and a highway cleanup team that not only picks up the litter that's on the side of the road from Burning Man, but from users year round, if those things are the type of thing you want to address in the EIS, please do. The important part about comments is that they need to be from your perspective and they need to be uh, non-hyperbolic and just very kind of rational. Ultimately, this is a scientific process. Um, yep, and the little sign being waved. Um, and it can acknowledge, as Marnie said, some of the, some of the, you know, the, the um, discrepancies between what they're asking to do and what they understand, and they do understand, which is why this whole process is so puzzling, what we already do at the event. So um, providing dumpsters at a Leave No Trace event is going to result in people just putting their trash out on the side of the thing. So then very quickly you can imagine what's happening is it's a change of the culture of the 30 years of learning and bedding in how to do this thing properly. Um, and right, so that's, you know, that's, that's one example. Um, having private security at the gate. And what do you think that's going to do to the gate, the volunteers at gate? who actually are out there for six weeks in the dust, away from the city, away from all the fun, love what they do, but they don't want to be out there with some guys in yellow jackets. And you know what? Guys in yellow jackets from a private security company who are probably being paid minimum wage also don't want to be there. <laughs> so <laughs> there's, 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 it's, it's a lose-lose situation, and, um, but Marnie and I have hope. We do. Uh, BLM wants to replace our culture with concrete, but we believe that you guys feel differently. We definitely feel differently, and we're up for the fight. Um, we, so th there's some other problems, as Charlie touched on. I'm just going to touch on these a little bit. So in addition to the mitigations, there's, uh, there are mistakes, errors, wrong information. They're, they're drawing conclusions on false assumptions. Uh, if you have time to read through part of it, I think you will see some of that. Um, the EIS <laughs> analyzes remote or even impossible scenarios, um, and I'm not kidding, like Wolverine migration into the playa during the event. And <laughs> yeah, it's in there. It's in there. And, and an outbreak of valley fever. I will say that they removed one of the best parts, which in an earlier draft they suggested we plant large trees around the perimeter. <laughs> um, so the, the, these are the uh, land management experts who are in charge of the decisions around our next 10 years and our future. Um, we know among you are experts in our culture, experts in our operations, experts in science. We need to hear from you. Um, another thing that they want is uh, shields on lights uh, to protect the migratory birds. Mm -hmm. or, the, or bird. <laughs> I, I <would> say so. <laughs> so. So many of you have read in the EIS that it says going up to 100,000 people. And I want to be super clear right now, we don't have uh, plans immediately to grow. Um, over the years, Burning Man has grown, but it has grown with thought on a yearly basis as we've understood how to increase the operations and how to work with the culture. This is, a, this is an exercise that we're doing to understand the impacts. Um, and so that's just a, a, a thing that we should be super clear about at this point. Um, it also makes it all the more frustrating that the things that have been put in are, are based on problem uh, it, mitigations that are completely over the top for problems that really don't exist, which hasn't really helped us with our actually rational understanding of what growing would mean. So um, there's that. I am going to be available to answer questions. Uh, that I'm, I hope that you'll have more questions. There's a lot to talk about with this document in a session later today at 345 on governmental entities and OSS. I think we've got um, about a minute left, and I just want to emphasize how important it is that when you submit your comment, which I know you're going to do, that it qualifies as a substantive comment through the BLM's criteria. So this isn't a vote, so you're comments about supporting Burning Man or being in favor of Burning Man or opposing something in the EIS 
are not as impactful as speaking to a specific part of the EIS, even a specific paragraph or report, and explaining why they failed to consider certain uh, factors or that they have made a mistake or that their conclusions are wrong. So think about it scientifically. Um, all and, but weighing in on the culture is important. Our event is extremely important to Nevada, to businesses in Nevada, to elected officials in Nevada. They care, they want to hear from you, and BLM is obligated to address your comments. So I can talk more about that in the later session, um, but. Yeah, well, one final piece. There will be um, a, so there is a blog on the journal at the moment. There will be um, an update coming to that at some point midweek. Um, that was our initial response. Um, we will get. We are in the process of trying to get organized. There's a lot to talk about. I here. think we have Thank you. a couple. I, I heard Kim, and then I have to see one hand, and then we have to go. The deadline for your comments. Thank you, Kim. Is April 29th. I almost didn't want to mention it because I didn't want you to take that long. But you've got till April 29th to rally the troops. We've got one more. Yes. So the two public meetings that you could participate in, and boy, wouldn't it be great to pack the house uh, because we are up against some stiff opposition in Lovelock. Uh, we have a public meeting on Monday, April 8th from 5 to 8 p.m., and we have a meeting in Lovelock on Tuesday, April 9th from 5 to 8 p.m. First one's Reno. Did I not say that? Sorry. April 8th, Reno. Uh, April 9th, Lovelock. The information on location will be in the blog coming out later this week. Yes. yes. The EIS is linked on the blog. Yes. The comment is about how to be sp specific and impactful in your comments, and there is a comment on the journal post that will help, and we're going to post a comprehensive one next week. So we have to go, but thank you guys so much. Thank you.